Wind energy and tidal energy will play a crucial role in moving us to a world powered by low carbon electricity. But what happens when the wind isn't blowing? We then need some way of storing that energy for when we need it. Now one technology that can do that is lithium ion batteries. They're just like the batteries you find in your phone, although much, much bigger. At Imperial College in London, Dr. Billy Wu is a senior lecturer at the Dyson School of Design Engineering and an expert in electrochemical energy. His research focuses on low carbon technologies and the various ways we can store renewable energy, such as batteries and hydrogen fuel cells. Global warming is one of the greatest challenges of our generation and essentially we need to develop greener, cheaper technologies to get us away from using fossil fuels. So the focus of our research is on developing better batteries for things like electric vehicles. We model these devices to understand how they behave over time and then there's the engineering aspect of how do we deploy these in a system of integrating many of these batteries into a plane or a car or a bike. Currently, we generate electricity by burning fossil fuels in a big power plant. That electricity then gets transported to uh, us in major cities, and then we use that energy to power our homes and so on. So the grid at the moment is uh, predominantly powered by fossil fuels. And where we need to be in the future is using mostly renewables. So things like solar and wind, these are low carbon sources of electricity. But the problem with wind and solar is that they're intermittent, which means that the sun shines and the wind blows at certain times when we don't need electricity. And when we do need electricity, uh, it might not be available. So the solution there is to develop energy storage solutions like batteries, which can store that excess electricity, and then we can use it when we actually need it. But the problem with large scale batteries is that currently they cost way too much to be practical. So we need to develop batteries which last longer, which are cheaper and which are more powerful to provide us and enable that low carbon energy generation. In the lab, the team study the physical structures of these next generation batteries. What you see here is an electron microscope image of a battery particle. There are thousands and millions of these inside your mobile phone. And these are tiny. This is about 20 microns, which is about a fifth of a human hair. And essentially what we're looking for here is how round is the particle? Does it have any cracks in? That tells me if the material is made well, and then we can use that information to correlate with the performance of the battery. So currently batteries are used in almost every aspect of our lives. They power our mobile phones, our laptops, our consumer electronics. But we are going through a once in a generation technology transition from using fossil fuels for powering cars, motorbikes, trucks and lorries towards renewable low carbon technologies like battery electric vehicles. We're going to see more and more electric vehicles come onto the market because many countries around the world have announced targets to be net zero carbon in the future. And that's the aspiration of what we want to do. Upscale the technology, make it cheaper and affordable so that everyone can do this. So what skills and qualifications do you need to get into this field? The skills that are needed are problem solving skills because we're trying to figure out solutions to problems that we've never solved before. So you need to be able to look at a problem and say, how about I try it this way? How about I try it this way? And often there is a lot of failure in what we do. So we also need a degree of resilience as well to know that we can try something and know that it's okay that it doesn't succeed. Beyond that, we also need analytical skills. So when we test the material and we get data back from it, how do we know if it's actually a good battery, bad battery, and the process or the scientific methodology to actually find the solution that we want? We need material scientists and chemists to develop better materials. We need people like mechanical engineers and electrical engineers to take these devices and then integrate them into things like electric cars. Then we need policy makers and economics uh, people to figure out how do we make this sustainable from a financial perspective. So lots of skills have to come together to realize this dream of an electric future. So the types of uh, subjects that you might want to study to get involved in batteries includes chemistry, physics, maths, 
And then obviously, uh, computer science is an emerging area so that you know how to program. These are all key skills that we look for, for computer modelers to help us solve these problems. Within a school setting, one of the things I really recommend is physically making one of these electric vehicles, be that an electric scooter, an electric bike, or an electric race car. And you can really see how the technology translates into our real world and spark that imagination to start a career in this area. How long do you think it will be before these kinds of batteries are available? So history has taught us that for a new technology to come through in batteries, it takes about 10 years from scientific discovery to testing it in the lab to make sure it works to ultimately scaling up. But one of the challenges is that uh, to make it go faster, we also need the materials and setting up mines can take anywhere from five years to 25 years and it costs a lot of money. At the end of the day, the game uh, is to reduce emissions. And lithium ion batteries uh, do have an environmental impact. Most of the world's lithium comes from places like Chile and Argentina, where they take it from brines and hard rocks, and then that's shipped over to China, processed, and then back over to the UK. So we do need to vertically integrate a bit more, reduce those miles uh, of moving materials, but also think about more eco-friendly materials. So there's a really interesting technology right now called sodium ion batteries, where sodium, you'll find it in the ocean. I don't think we're gonna run out of salt anytime soon. And that can be quite exciting. And I do think there's a place for lots of different types of technologies in the future, because we're just gonna electrify so many different things. So cars, right now we're talking about, but also planes and ships and everything else. So it's a really exciting time for future technologies. And what are the other advances beyond batteries in electric cars that we can hope to see over the next few years? Yeah, great question. So the name of the game right now is to increase energy density so you can go further on a single charge and also to make them safer. So right now, lithium ion batteries, there's a liquid inside of them called electrolyte, which allows the lithium ions to swim through them to allow the battery to work. And that's both great in terms of performance, but it's also flammable. So right now, a lot of research is in something called a solid state battery, where you remove that liquid and you replace it with a solid. That makes it safer and also more energy dense as well, because it allows you to use different materials. And that's coming out right now. There's lots of prototype uh, batteries coming out. And hopefully in the next few years, maybe 10 years or so, we'll start to see them in commercial vehicles. Well, thank you, Billy. Really.